Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we are expanding the conversation around Catholic sexuality. My name is Ellen Holloway. I am a Catholic speaker and coach who specializes in sex and marital intimacy, and I am the host of this fine podcast that you are listening to right now. Today, we are talking about prioritizing sex, what that means, what it looks like, why we kind of shy away from actually prioritizing sex in the form of actually putting it on the schedule, and why we should prioritize sex as much as possible. Let's get started, though, with a listener question. We always answer a listener question at the beginning of every episode. We have an open question box in the show notes. You can ask questions at any time. I answer one at the beginning of every episode. And then at the end of the month, I gather all the questions that I didn't get to answer on an episode. And I record an in-depth Q&A video that is available in the exclusive Charting Toward Intimacy community. You can join that for just $5 a month. A link is also in the show notes for that. This week's question. I get this question a lot and I love answering it. The question is, what are the best lubes to use? So there's a lot of opinions out there about lubrication, but let me just state a couple of big facts. First off, there is nothing wrong with using any like type of lube, but it's really important that you make sure that the lube is as clean as possible. You know, your vagina is an orifice to your body. You want to make sure that you have, you know, as few ingredients and as clean of ingredients as possible. And then you also want to make sure that that lube does not have any spermicide in it. And then as far as like specifics or types go, my recommendation is always going to be an oil. And my two oils that I recommend are sweet almond oil and jojoba oil. And that's because those two oils are the closest to your like natural vaginal pH level. There's nothing wrong with a water-based lubricant, but here's what happens with water-based lubricants is you put it on, you need to put water-based lubricants on very generously. You put it on and then after about 10 or 15 minutes, your body absorbs that water. And so it starts to get kind of sticky and tacky um, and you need to reapply. So you might need to reapply two, three, maybe even four or more times, depending on how long it, you, you and your husband are taking. Whereas with oil, your skin does not absorb oil quite as quickly. And so you can put on just a little bit of oil, apply it once and be good for several hours after that until you actually like wipe it off or, or clean off that oil. And also, but also it's, it's oil. I mean, if you're using something that's a hundred percent, you know, sweet almond oil or a hundred percent jojoba oil, you don't have to wipe it off. Um, that's perfectly safe for your skin. So those are my big recommendations when it comes to lubricant. I will link a, uh, a link to the sweet almond oil and the jojoba oil that I recommend. If you want to give oil a try, I highly recommend it. Okay. So let's talk about prioritizing sex and let's talk about priorities. We prioritize things that are important to us and sex should be important to us. That marital intimacy is foundational in a way to your marriage. Um, It's also a fruit of your relationship, but it kind of serves this dual purpose as being a way of really uniting you and your spouse together while also like kind of being a fruit of a healthy and close relationship. Also what sex is doing when husband and wife come together, they are imaging the Trinity. That is vastly important. The fact that husband and wife image the Trinity. And so sex should be important to us because we're able to image God 
through our interaction with our husband in that way. Sex is also a renewing of the wedding vows. You say those with your words during mass, and then you say the same thing with your body during sex. We talk about, you've probably heard this if you listen to the podcast on a regular basis, is love needs to be free, total, faithful, and fruitful. Your wedding vows, those questions before consent that you answer at a Catholic wedding, Those speak to love being free, total, faithful, and fruitful. And then in the bedroom later that night and every other time that husband and wife come together, we are renewing that, that we are coming together freely, that we are remaining faithful, that we are bringing all of ourself to the encounter. We're totally present. And then also we are always allowing that act to remain fruitful and to be open to open to life remaining, uh, allowing that procreative aspect to still exist in the act. So let's talk about some other things that we prioritize, some other things that are important. Things like going to mass, things like doing a workout, things like prayer. You know, we specifically set aside times to do those things. Your family probably has a specific Sunday mass that you generally go to. You have pretty much put that on your calendar. And maybe maybe you don't have an exact, you know, we always go to the 9 a.m. on Sundays. Maybe you don't have a, a, a specific mass that you go to, but that is always something that is a part of your Sunday or your Saturday evening, no matter what, no matter if you're traveling, no matter if you're visiting your parents. Every Sunday you go to mass. We make that a priority because we recognize its importance. We schedule it. Okay. The same goes for workouts. If I just started my week and said, all right, I'm going to get, I'm just going to do my workouts every day, but I don't actually sit and think about when in the day that's going to happen of like, okay, I'm going to get this workout in before the kids wake up this day. And then I'm going to do this workout while they're napping that day. If I don't do that, my workouts aren't going to happen that week. Same goes for prayer. I, I think this is like one of the common things that we as Catholics struggle with is like not actually prioritizing prayer as much as we should. But we, for me, if I don't set aside that 10 or 15 minutes to absolutely pray, then, then it often doesn't happen. And that is kind of the crux of what we're talking about here with sex is when we don't set aside specific time in our week, to engage in the marital act, it often gets kind of pushed to the side. And then what happens is is that there's a lot of emotion behind sex. And so if it's, if it's not prioritized, if it's sort of pushed to the side, things start to get tense, tension builds. And then eventually the pot boils over and somebody gets frustrated and it's like, oh my gosh, we never have sex. And that's because we didn't prioritize it. Why do we think that sex, which should be vastly important to your marriage, why do we think that sex should just be spontaneous? Spontaneity is one of the dumbest lies from Hollywood, from books, from pornography. Like, I'm going to say something that a lot of people might not like. (laughs) Good sex isn't spontaneous. Think about it this way. We expect people to really think through important things. We'd be really concerned if our friend just spontaneously decided to donate all of his money that he had saved up to buy a house and just run and join the circus. I'd I'd be pretty concerned. I'd I'd want to sit down with them and and make sure they were thinking things through. Or if your friend who doesn't know how to cook spontaneously decided to cook you a seven course meal, you might be a little concerned. Is that going to taste good at all? Is it even going to be edible, right? It's kind of a silly example. But we have this idealization of spontaneity, like things will only be good if they're unplanned for some reason. And here's the thing is most of the time, like things don't really work out if they're completely unplanned. 
there's usually some aspect of planning involved in anything that is good. So think about taking a long trip. I think I see this a lot that like people have this idealization of like a spontaneous trip. Let's just jump in the car and go. Let's head to the airport and just go. But do you actually know someone who has ever taken a trip like that? And if you do, like, let me know. I want to talk to them. If you really want that aspect of spontaneity in a trip, you still have to have a framework of plans to make sure that the important things get covered. Things like your passport being up to date. Things like, do you have enough money to actually cover the trip? Sure, exactly what happens day to day can absolutely be spontaneous in a trip. But there are some things that really should not be spontaneous or else you're going to say get stuck in a country if your passport expires or if you run out of money and then you're stuck in Greece and you need to get back home to the United States. Here's another example. In movies, like if you're thinking like rom-com movies, this is like classic rom-com. The man takes the woman out on a quote, spontaneous date, but actually it is meticulously planned in advance, but it's all a surprise to the woman. What we really want when we say we want spontaneity is that we want romance. We want our Prince Charming to plan out an evening of intimacy with chocolates and wine and candles and a brand new set of lingerie. We want surprise. But the best surprises are actually very well planned and every detail is known by everyone except for the person who is being surprised. Like if you're actually trying to surprise someone, you have to be very detailed in the planning to make sure that they don't find out. Spontaneity is a complete illusion. Think about the last time you had a date night that wasn't all that planned in advance. This happens to my husband and I all the time. We plan out the childcare part of the date night, and then we get into the car and we look at each other and we're like, well, what do you want to do? And and then we just kind of like sit there for a while or like maybe start driving, but we still don't really know what to do. It's that classic, like, where do you want to eat dinner? Where do you want to eat dinner? Well, I don't know. I'm fine with anywhere. What do you want to eat? You know, and and then in the date, we end up doing something like wandering through Target or just grabbing a cup of coffee. And, and while those things are fun, there's definitely things I would prefer to do on a date night, like maybe have reservations to a nice restaurant or try a new bar that I, or my husband researched ahead of time. Here's what I'm really trying to get at. Spontaneity is actually not what you should be going for in your sexual relationship. Romance and surprise is actually what you should be aiming toward. Something that I hear a lot in uh, my one-on-one coaching clients is that women feel like they should be having sex more often or that it's hard to have as much as much sex as they would like because of schedules that right there. If, if you're like, Oh man, that's me too. That should be a huge indicator that you need to put sex on the calendar. If we know that sex is good and holy and that we should be doing it as often as we can with our husband, then plan for that. Don't just expect it to happen. Your sex life, I'm sorry if I'm going to burst your bubble here, your sex life is not like the movies. There are very few times that you and your husband will have a desire to have sex at exactly the same time and just be able to look at each other and know you're going to want it or he's going to want it, or maybe both of you won't desire it physically on a certain night, but you want it on a unitive emotional level. That is why we need to set aside time. We need to plan ahead. And now back to what we want when we say that sex should be spontaneous. Because I I hear this all the time when I talk about scheduling sex. And and it's just a bunch of backlash of like, no, but, but sex should be spontaneous. So back to what I said before. 
We want romance and surprise. That is what you are wanting when you say things like, I just think sex should be spontaneous. So here's my recommendation for you. I want you and your husband to plan out the next two times that you guys are going to have sex. Maybe it's later this week. Maybe it's once this week and once next week. Maybe it's uh, once you confirm you're in your infertile time. Plan the days of the next two times. And then you're going to take one of those days and your husband takes the other. And you both plan out the evening for the other. I recommend that you, the one listening to this podcast right now, which is probably the woman in this relationship, I want you to take the first one so that your husband knows what you mean by planning out the evening. So here's what you're going to do. I want you to think about the things that your husband likes when it comes to sex and intimacy. Does he like certain lingerie or undergarments that you have? Does he like taking baths together? Does he like massages? Does he like watching a movie and relaxing together before having sex? Does he like reading a book, talking, playing a board game, listening to music, candles, taking a shower together? When it comes to sex, what are the things he likes? And feel free to grab a piece of paper and like brainstorm for a little bit. You can always like throw it in the shredder later or something like that. And if you don't know, if you're sitting there with a piece of paper and you're like, my mind is totally blank. I have no idea. That means it is time to have a sit down conversation about the things you both like and dislike when it comes to sex and like write them down. But that is a fantastic conversation to have, especially outside of the moment. Like that's a really good conversation to have on a day that you don't plan to have sex and really lay out. I like these things, but I really don't like these things. And please don't ever do these again. Or this is how I like it being initiated to. That is definitely like a topic for another podcast episode. I won't go too deep into that. Let's jump back to what you're going to do to plan out this night. Okay. So you kind of, you've, you've brainstormed some things that your husband likes when it comes to sex and intimacy. Then I want you to specifically think about the ways he would like to be initiated to what would be fun or enjoyable to him? Does he like the idea of role-playing costumes, lingerie, doing a card deck, What does he like when it comes to initiating? Then think about like specifically during sex. What does he like? Does he like the comfort of the bedroom? Would he like to try a different room in the house or maybe a different location in your bedroom than you normally do? Basically, what you're doing is, you know, and I think most of the listeners here, you guys have younger children, but basically like, From kids' bedtime or whatever the start of your evening is through cleanup, you are going to plan out what you are both going to do, but you're going to keep it a surprise from your husband. Then when that night rolls around, you're going to lead your husband through your planned evening. And yes, of course, things are going to go differently than planned, but you'll have planned out the general idea of kind of how you want this sexual encounter to go, specifically focusing on what you think your husband would really like. Think back to the example that I gave of the rom-com movie where the man like takes the woman on this spontaneous and yet meticulously planned date that is like all of her favorite things. And, you know, they go strolling through a park and just twinkle lights light up right at the moment where they enter the park and things that she would love or enjoy. That's what you're doing for your husband is what are the things that he would really like? You're trying to give a gift to him. And here's, here's what this is. This is going to accomplish a few things. First, it's going to show your husband that you listen and care about the things he likes even if you wouldn't necessarily choose to do them yourself. So if there's something that you wrote down and you're kind of like, yeah, but I don't really, I don't know. That's not my favorite thing. I, I would really encourage you so long as it's something that you are comfortable with, I would really encourage you to do that. The second thing that this is going to accomplish is by planning out this whole evening, your husband is hands down going to feel loved and appreciated hands down. 
And then the third thing that this is going to accomplish is that you are giving him a great example of how to plan out the evening when it's his turn. Another thing that I really recommend when you do this exercise is debriefing the night after, maybe immediately after or like the next day. Explain to him why you chose the activities, location, clothing, etc. that you chose. Share with him how you knew that he likes XYZ, which is why you plan to do that on that evening. Like really spell it out. Like I thought about these things and I knew that you liked this particular lingerie and I knew that you liked candles and I knew that you have always wanted to try taking a shower together before we have sex. And so I planned to do those things, right? This is going to further help clarify what you're looking for when it's his turn to plan the evening. We're, we're giving a really good example through also loving our husband. We're telling, basically telling him exactly what we want to have through loving him. But it's also going to give him an opportunity to give you feedback. Maybe you thought he was going to love something and he really just didn't. (laughs) Or maybe there's something else that he would love to see or try next time you plan the evening for him. Because this is not just like a one-time activity. This is something I highly recommend. Like maybe you do this every time and you just like switch off planning the evening for each other. Or maybe this is something that you do once a month or maybe just like a couple of times a quarter. Let's... Let's go back to the spontaneous versus scheduled sex issue (laughs) argument. There's this concern that sex will just become a checklist item if we put it on our to-do list. Well, yes, of course there is that concern. I don't disagree that that concern exists. The same exact thing goes for mass and prayer. The same thing goes for spending time specifically with each one of your kids. If you do that 10 minute a day thing, that's like super popular right now. And honestly is very hard to actually accomplish every day. If it's on the schedule, but we are not prioritizing it, then it just becomes one more thing that we have to do. But if it's on the schedule, because it is something that is vitally important to our marriage, then it's not going to become just one more thing to do. If it's that important, we shouldn't let it become just a checklist item. There is a difference between scheduling and prioritizing. If you are prioritizing something, you are likely also scheduling it. But if you are scheduling something, you're not necessarily also prioritizing it. The last thing that I want to say about scheduling sex is this. Who is it to say that if you schedule sex and prioritize making the time for it, you can't also spontaneously have sex on a day that isn't planned if you or your husband are in the mood and the timing works? Like, this is something I really don't understand is people like, oh my gosh, I could never schedule sex because it just like, it just takes out that spontaneous aspect of it. Well, no, because if you schedule it and you can also leave room for that spontaneous like time that happens. And now you're just having more sex, which is great. Just because you scheduled sex tomorrow doesn't mean you're barred from having sex until tomorrow night when it's on the schedule. Have sex whenever you and your spouse want to, but also make sure that you are making it a priority and putting in time and effort into this important aspect of your marriage. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at Charting Toward Intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes. Until next time. Thank you.